Okay, welcome to day four. We have been on an amazing adventure going through the Rocky Mountains, learning all about trains. But the big thing we've learned about this week is we've been learning all about Jesus' power. On day one, we learned that Jesus' power helps us do hard things. On day two, we learned that Jesus' power gives us hope, that helping hand when we need it. On day three, yesterday, we learned that Jesus' power helps us to be bold, to give us strength, to pick us up and give us that little push. And today, we are going to learn about the greatest power that there is. We think of a locomotive, we think about how powerful it is and how strong it is and how many cars it can pull and it can go up big hills. And it is so powerful, but we are going to learn about something even bigger and more powerful. And today, we're going to talk about our God sightings. Hopefully all week you've been ha having your Watch for God band on. And my God sighting yesterday was me and my son were out at our park, and the flowers were in bloom, and the sycamore was starting to even turn red. And he's like, it's not fall yet. I said, well, sometimes these plants turn early. And the sycamore was nice and bright red. It just reminded me how God's beauty and God's grace and God's power is with us each and every day. So let's get our great day going. Kevin, let's do our Bible intro for today. And here we go. Are you ready to splash into another fantastic day at VBS? I'm Finn, a rainbow trout. I'm happiest when I'm taking a dip in a clean, bubbly mountain stream. Ah, oh, this is the life. This stream is where I began life. This exact spot where I hatched is pretty important to me, but we'll get to that later. I spend most of my day flipping my fins, swishing my scales, and exploring this awesome river looking for food. I love to eat. Me and my fishy friends spend about 80% of our day looking for food. I use my mouth to poke around and look for good stuff to eat. And sometimes I end up getting a mouthful of weeds and sticks. Not bad. Of course it's not as good as the bugs or the crustaceans I usually like. I'll even jump out of the water for them. God gave me something super sharp to help me find food, my eyes. They show me what to eat <laughs> and what to stay away from. After being born, I might travel to a new stream far away from my home. But when it's time to lay eggs, rainbow trout always return home. My cousins, steelhead trout, travel from a freshwater stream all the way to the ocean. Even if they've lived in the ocean for a couple of years, they swim against the stream to make it back home. That takes a lot of power. Wow. Home is important to me and my fish family. Jesus knew that a forever home was important too. That's why Jesus died, to pay for all the wrong things you've ever done or will ever do. Because those sins are paid for, you can have life forever in an awesome place called heaven. But Jesus' power doesn't just cover your sins. Jesus is so powerful that he beat death forever. But it gets even better. The Bible tells us the Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. That means a friendship with Jesus gives you the same awesome power that let him beat death. <laughs> wow! So, if you're feeling worried or sad, or things seem out of control, Remember that Jesus' power is bigger than anything, and it's right there for you. Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. And that is so cool. And then we learn from Finn that Jesus' power helps us live forever. Trust Jesus. Now, an amazing thing about a train ride, it's a lot like life. 
when you start your life, you are born. And just like life is like a track, and we take a step on this track, and we are a baby, and we start to walk, and we get a little bit bigger, we become a toddler, we get a little bit bigger, we go to preschool, get a little bit bigger, we go to elementary school, a little bit bigger, junior high, and high school. Then we get a little bit bigger, we go to college, we graduate college, we get a job, we get married, start a family. Someday we hope to retire, have grandkids. But you know what? Someday that journey will end. We will die. And it's kind of sad. But you know what? Today we're going to learn about the greatest power of all. And it was in the Bible intro. And that would Believing in Jesus, our life does not end. Our journey does not stop. It continues. Because Jesus prepared a place for us in heaven, and we can live with him forever. That's why Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. Now, all day long, we're going to learn about that story. It's such a powerful story. And we are going to do right now, we're going to do one of our songs to get you going on our journey today. We are going to do number one to get us going. Do a little music to get us up and get going, get some energy going. Kevin's all ready. Trust in you, Jesus, you're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you. You give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. journey there's no looking back with jesus to lead us we're on the right track oh, 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 oh. wide open spaces for wide open eyes we're looking ahead for the next big surprise oh, oh, oh. Spaces for wide open eyes. We're looking ahead for the next big surprise. Oh, 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 oh. We trust, we trust, we trust in you, Jesus. You're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you. You give us hope. 
Jesus' power pulls us through. Now, yesterday, uh, our poor buddy Cam, his, tr his train full of M&Ms was having trouble. Somebody was going to take it. And was he going to be bold? And then Cam, poor Cam was looking up ahead. There's a big mountain up ahead. And he didn't know if he could make it up and over the mountain. <sighs> he just needed to be bold. So are you ready to find out where how he's doing? Here we go. Hey, friends. So I heard that our friend Cam was able to get the train up and over the mountain. He probably won't be back for a few hours, so we'll have to ask him about it later. I'm here. I'm here. I uh, made it. Oh, Cam! What happened to you? Uh, traveling on a train isn't supposed to be that tiring. Isn't the train supposed to do all the work? Oh, no, yeah, no, everything went great. We delivered the M&Ms and everyone was so happy. And we turned the train around to come back and we were on our way back and then I started thinking how great it would be if uh, we got back faster. Aw, did you miss us? Yeah, of, of course. But in order to make the train go faster, you need to make more steam. And in order to make more steam, you need to make the furnace hotter. And in order to make the furnace hotter, you gotta shovel more coal. So there we were. We were shoveling coal. And it wasn't enough, so we added more coal. And, and, and then... And then you got here faster. No, we ran out of coal. Oh, that's tiring and frustrating. Yeah, just when I thought we were going to make it, the train came to a halt miles away from the station. And I went off hiking to find help while the rest of the crew stayed with the train. Wow. Well... Everything comes to an end. Coal runs out, trains stop, parties end, people graduate from school, adults retire. It's just a part of life. Well, that is not the most encouraging thing you've ever told me. Let me finish. Today, my friends and I are learning that Jesus' power lets us live forever. And thanks to Jesus, life can continue on forever and never run out. Wow, that is the most encouraging thing you've ever told me. See? I just needed to end my story. Yeah, but I haven't known anyone who lived forever. Then it sounds like you need to hear more about Jesus, Cam. I'm happy to tell you about him because, well, he's my forever friend. Well, let me go find a train that can go save the rest of my crew, and then when I get back, you can tell me everything you have to say. Okay, I'll be right here waiting. Forever. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See ya. He's just one thing after another. We'll just have to wait till tomorrow to see how the story ends. Okay. I need to wake up. I know you guys probably need to wake up. It's day four. We, we've been a little tired. It's been a busy week. So we need to get on our feet and get going. So I need Kevin to help wake us up. Let's do number four.
Okay, welcome back to that. You guys, I know we love doing the power shuffle. We were just talking about it. We love doing the power shuffle that gets us up, that gets us going, and starts our day off right. So let's do one of the ones that we did learned yesterday. Let's do number six, Kevin. Okay, I stand corrected. Even I make mistakes. That was a brand new song for you guys, and I heard about it here. So I hope you enjoyed learning that new one, and we expanded our horizons. It's great. Now I will do a song that we've done before. Let's do number eight, Kev.
is so cool. We love the whitewater rafting on the river that we were just talking. We said, that looks, we wish you could all be out there doing that. That would be such a fun event. Okay, we have time for one more. And this one has been the song of VBS. Okay, Kev, let's do number five. in heaven for me this train is bound for glory this train this train is bound for glory this train this train is bound for glory this train this train is bound for glory this is made a place in heaven for me in heaven for me this train is bound for glory this train Thank you guys so much. You guys are doing such good singing this year and picking up our songs so quickly. We are so glad you are. Now, it's that time. You're going to need your bag again, like we've done every day. And today, it is day number four, and the bag has Finn as a Bible buddy. So look for your bag. It's got Finn in it. That's the bag you will need. You will also need your Tracking with Jesus book. And if you are in the preschool, the coloring page for today is black and it's got fin on it. And you will need that too. Okay, are you guys ready to start your adventure? Let's pray and we'll get you going. Dear God, today we learn about the most awesome power, the power you gave your son to conquer death. Help us, guide us. And be with us in all that we do each and every day and help us share this message with others. And we just ask you on this day to guide us, bless us, and protect us and keep us safe. And all God's people said, Amen. Okay, it's time to get you going on your adventure. And I can't think of a better way to start the day than with Pastor Gerke up at Bible Adventure. Here we go, Kev. Welcome, boys and girls to Bible Adventure, day four. Now, before we get started, I wanna tell you that I need you to get some things that you're gonna to need to use today. So I want you to go out and find some paper. I got a variety of different colored pieces of paper. And then I want you to get some scissors and some tape, whether it's masking tape or whatever, but something that we'll be able to, you can put as a tape. And we're gonna do something with the paper, cut something out. And then I want you to tape it on your clothing. So whatever that's going to uh, help you with, that's what I want you to do. And if, if you can't find tape, that's okay. But that's kind of the plan.
let's uh, just remember this very important thing. As we talk about our Bible adventure today, the Bible tells us a lot of really neat things. Especially in the beginning, it tells us how God created the world and he created it perfect. And he created Adam and Eve and he created them perfect. And you know what? When God created you and me, he created us perfect too. But the sad reality is that Adam and Eve listened to the devil's lies. And because they listened to the devil's lies, they sinned. And they brought sin in the world. And that's what happens when you and I do things that are against what God wants us to do. And we're not living that perfect life that God wants us to. So I want you to come on in with me and we're going to uh, cut up some stuff and I'll, I'll explain that to you when we come on in. Okay, come on, let's go on in. So here we are. God has made us very special. What I want you to do is I want you to take out a piece of paper. And I'm going to have you to make, I'm going to ask you to make a heart. Kind of like this right up here because a heart, it shows us that God loves us and God wants us to love other people. So I'm going to have you make a heart and uh, you might need to have somebody help you with this. But this is how I do it. You fold it in half, you take your scissor and you just kind of cut around like this doesn't have to be perfect by any means because my hearts aren't usually very perfect. Anyway, what I want you to do is I want, and then you cut it like that. After you cut it like that, I want you to get your pen, paper, or pen, pencil, ink marker, whatever it is, and I want you to write your name on it. So that shows you that, because when you write your name, it shows you that God loves you and he cares about you and each one of us is very special. I'm just going to write Pastor Bob on mine. So there we got that. Pastor Bob, it is. God made us. God cares about us. And then what I want you to do is I want you to take a piece of tape. Now that piece of tape that you want to make can be really special like this. And then usually it can be masking. It can be um Scotch tape, masking tape, any kind of tape that you can use that you can just kind of fold on back like that, put on the back of it, and then I want you to tape it to your clothes. Just like that. Okay, so this is God's perfect plan. God loves us, God cares about us, God wants us to be his friends, and God wanted Adam and Eve to be his friend too. But the sad truth is they listened to a lie, a lie that the devil told them. And that lie was that they could be like God. But God is the only God there is. And because they listened to the lie, they ate the fruit that God said not to eat. And because they did, they brought sin into this world. And the devil still tells us lies. He tells us lies that something like, you can be good enough, or you can do enough good things, or you're good enough on your own. And in fact, some trophies like this are kind of an idea about how People can say, wow, I'm a really good person because I've done something better than other people. Well, those are the lies to believe that you can be perfect and you can do things better than anybody else perfectly. Those are simply lies and God wants us to be his friends. And that's why God loves you and God loves me. And that's why God's given us the Bible because the Bible teaches us that when we sin, we separate ourselves from God. And God doesn't want us to separate ourselves from him, but we did. Adam and Eve did. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your heart off. And I want you to take it and put it as far away in the room as you can. So I'm going to take mine and I'm just going to put it over here for right now. 
So and I'm gonna, just going to set that down over there. I want you to do that too because that just goes to show us that we are separate our, separating ourselves. Our sin separates us from God. So the good news from the Bible is that God loves the world, you and me, so much that God sent his son into this world to die on the cross, to take our sins upon himself, and to pay for them so that you and I can be saved and we can be forgiven and we can be brought back to God again. That's how much God really loves you and me. Now, when Jesus was here on earth, he was a perfect man. And he did a lot of really good things. In fact, Jesus could get a trophy, a lot of trophies. Trophies for healing people from their sins, right? Jesus could get trophies for calming the storm. Jesus could get all sorts of different trophies. But Jesus didn't care to get, receive trophies for what he did. He came for a different reason. He came into this world because he loves you and he loves me. And he wants us to know how much he cares about us. You know, there's a song, it's a, it's a really old song. Uh, it was written even before I was born. And it's called The Old Rugged Cross. The Old Rugged Cross is, is a song that talks about how much God loves us and how much God cares about us. Now, I'm just gonna share with you the first two lines of that song. It goes like this, on a hill far away, stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. Take a look at the cross. The cross is an emblem of suffering and shame. Jesus had to die on the cross for you and for me. And you know, when Jesus was here on earth, there were people who thought that Jesus was a liar. And the things that he said were not true. And they said that the people who talked about Jesus were liars too. And they wanted to hurt them. And those are some of the things that we talked about earlier uh, this week. But, the, but what I want you to know is today, the people were so angry with Jesus that they arrested him and they beat him and they hurt him. And they did that because they didn't love him. They didn't believe that he was truly God's son. They forced him to take a cross and carry that cross to a hill that was called Golden Hill. And there on that hill, the Roman soldiers lifted him up so that he was hanging on that cross where he was willing to die for your sins and for mine. Even though Jesus never sinned, even though he was the perfect son of God, they put him to death to pay for your sins and my sins. Well, the song tells us that Jesus' cross is an emblem of suffering and shame. When you think about shame, you think about things that you've done and things that I've done, things that we're not proud of, but in fact, we're really sorry that we did. Things that we wish we could have a do-over, but we know we can't. That's what suffering and shame is all about. That's what the cross is. The people who put him on the cross wanted people to think about Jesus being the worst possible person, a criminal who had to be put to death and humiliated on a cross. But Jesus came into this world because he loves us and because he cares about us. And I want you to think about what it would be like to be separated from God. The, so what I want you to do is to imagine you've moved your cross, you've moved your heart as far away as you can in the room. And I want you just to sit down on the floor or in a chair, and I'm just going to sit in my chair, but you can sit on the floor wherever you are. And I want you to put your hands in your head. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to imagine being all by yourself. Separated from God's love. Separated from God's forgiveness. Separated from your friends. 
separated from any and every person who loves you and cares about you. Because that's what it means to be separated from Jesus forever. But God doesn't want you to be separated forever. And that's why God sent Jesus into this world. The Bible tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him will not experience eternal death, but will experience eternal life with him. And that's what God wants for you. And that's what God wants for me. And that's why Jesus came into this world and he suffered and he died on that cross to pay for our sins. And then he died. But you know, he didn't just die and stay in the grave. No, they put him in the tomb. And when they put him in the tomb, there was a big rock that was covering that tomb. But we know from the Bible that what God did is he sent an angel down and that angel rolled the stone away. And the angels came, to G came and saw the people who were there, Peter and John, and said, who are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth is not here, but he's been raised from the dead. And because Jesus has been raised from the dead, we know that Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. Yeah, Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. And that's what God wants you and me to do, is to live with him forever. And we can live with him forever by believing in Jesus by knowing that he loves us and cares about us. And so what I want you to do is to share that good news with other people as you have opportunity. And in your book, The Tracking with Jesus, Bible handbook that you have, there's a lesson four in there. In lesson four, I want you to be able to go to that and I want you to be able to read it, day four. This tells you the whole story shortly, reviewing what we've talked about today. So I encourage you to do that with your family as well. And now let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Loving me so much. You are willing to die for me. And help me now to live for you. And to share your love with other people too. By the things I do. By the things I say. Because I know those things aren't going to save me. You already did what was necessary. But I do that because I love you. And I want to share your love with others. In your name I pray. Amen. Thanks, boys and girls. We'll see you again tomorrow for Day 5 of Bible Adventure. And as we learned, oh, that powerful message... Jesus died for us, and he did not stay dead. He rose again to prepare a place for us and show that awesome power, and with Jesus' power, lets us live forever. Okay, we're ready for our next station. Let's go see Pastor Dan and KidVid Video. I'm Isaac, and I'm 11 years old. Uh, at home, I like to, well, a lot of times I play video games. <laughs> I have two brothers. One's older than me. He's in into acting and singing. My young Well, welcome back, you guys, to day four of Kid Vid. And today we're going to be watching another video about a real kid just like you. And I'm going to be upfront with you. Today's story, it has a little bit of sadness in it, but... It also has some real hope. And so we're gonna find out more about that. But first, let's review uh, what we're discovering for today about Jesus' power. Remember, Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. That's right, you guys. And so, uh, as part of today, also, we're gonna be diving into uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 11 specifically. And you'll find that on your uh, memory 
Bible memory buddy for today. And if you've got a Bible at home, I encourage you to grab that right now and, and to go ahead and open up to Romans chapter 8 because that whole chapter has got just a lot of really good stuff in there. It's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible because it talks about God's love and everything that he's done for us and how, the kind of relationship we have with Jesus. But specifically for today, we're looking at Romans chapter 8, verse 11, and, and this is what it says. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. That's right. That Spirit lives in in you and, and it's the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead that's that's incredible news that means that you can live knowing that you get to live forever with Jesus one day in heaven and that's forever now today we'll be meeting a boy named Isaac who who had a sad thing happen in his life his brother Joel died and he died of cancer now Cancer isn't something that happens very often, especially to kids, so it's not something you need to be afraid of or, or worry about. But we also know we're going to hear from this, the story here that Joel, Isaac's little brother, he loves Jesus. He was a friend of Jesus, and Isaac and his family are so glad to know that Joel is in a wonderful place now with Jesus. He gets to live with Jesus forever in heaven. And so let's watch to see how, how excited Isaac is to one day see his brother in heaven again. I'm Isaac and I'm 11 years old. Uh, at home I like to, well a lot of times I play video games. I have two brothers, one's older than me, he's in, into acting and singing. My younger brother Elijah, he's seven. My sister's name is Zoe. But she, like a normal four-year-old toddler, will make messes all the time, paint on the walls. Isaac also dances. Uh, I started dancing, I think, like two years ago. My favorite kind of dance is contemporary or lyrical. It's sort of like ballet, but it's a little more free. I always felt like when I was dancing, I wasn't really stressed about anything or worry, sort of forget about anything else that is bothering you. Isaac had another brother named Joel. Joel was two years younger than I am. He was always really happy and joyful. When he was one, he was diagnosed with brain cancer. Cancer is a disease that most kids do not have or get. He had to do some crazy thing to get rid of it, and it was gone for a year. But then it came back, and they said he only had a few months to live, but then he lived five more years. Sadly, Isaac's little brother, Joel, died. One of the things I remember a lot about him is he always had that, like, little giggle. <laughs> He, he always loved knocking cup towers down. So he'd make one that was like maybe double the size of him <laughs> and he'd run into it and it would c come down and he'd laugh so hard. A lot of times we'd take him to this farm. It was like a petting zoo in some places and you could feed the animals. I have this one mem memory of Joel. He, he was feeding the goats so we give him the bag to reach in and <laughs> give to the goats, but then he just gives the bag to the goats and the goat devours oh. the whole thing. <laughs> Joel always loved animals. One time he got to ride a pony and he was so happy. He loved it. Isaac misses his brother Joel. Joel loved Jesus and believed in him too. Um, a lot of times I feel sort of like I miss him and pretty sad, but I'm glad that he's in heaven and he can do so many things that I can't even do right now. <laughs> Dancing always like cheers me up because I sort of, it makes me think about God and how he's with Joel and he is amazing. <laughs> 
Isaac knows that because of Jesus, he will be able to see his brother again in heaven. I sort of look forward to hearing his giggle, and I look forward to running up to him and giving him a grand old hug. <laughs> in the Bible, the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 11 says, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. I feel like that verse makes me feel like sort of hopeful that we can share the power of God and the Holy Spirit with the whole world and that one day we can all know Jesus and God and praise and worship together. Even if we die, we still get to live forever in heaven with God and Jesus' power is letting you live forever. Jesus' power lets us live forever. Thanks for watching that video with me. I think it's pretty normal to feel kind of sad after watching something like that. And so, if that's the way you feel, that, that's okay. But this story also had a lot of hope. We saw that Joel loved Jesus, and that Jesus loved him, and that Joel is in heaven right now. Joel doesn't have to deal with the treatments that he's getting anymore, or, or he doesn't have to deal with any of the, the bad stuff from cancer. He gets to be happy with Jesus right now. And so let me ask you, do you know anyone in your life that has passed away that's gone to be with Jesus? As a pastor, I actually deal with this on a fairly regular basis. There's family members that they come in and they've lost loved ones and they're sad, but also at the same time, uh, they rejoice that their loved one is in heaven with Jesus. Personally, I've had my grandparents pass away and that's been a, that's been a sad thing and I'll miss them terribly, but I know that I'll get to see them again one day in heaven, and that we get to all be together, and we get to do that grand old hug like Isaac was talking about. So I want you to take the next couple of minutes here to talk about that, maybe with the people you're with, and to, to just discuss, you know, if you've had any feelings about how people have, have gone to be with Jesus and, and they've passed away, or, or maybe your family members that are, that are there with you, maybe they've, had, they've lost somebody, and uh, they can talk about that, that loss with you and, and how there's still, still hope. Hope that, that Jesus is active in that and that he goes and he saves us and he, we get to be with him forever. So talk about that right now. Thanks for sharing your stories. I'm so glad that we can be uh, open and honest with each other here at KidVid. And it's sad when, when someone we love or we know dies, but we also have hope. Because 
There's wonderful news, right? Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. That's right, you guys. Now, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, Isaac mentioned having a, a he's looking forward to the grand old hug that he's going to have with his little brother, Joel. And so if you're by yourself right now, go ahead and, and give yourself a nice big hug. Or, or if, with you, if you're with your family, go ahead and let, let's do a big group hug together. Go ahead and do that right now. Big group hug. Mm, okay, okay, that's good. Settle down. All right. I'm so thankful that Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus, right? And so let's close now with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for your love and for your power. Thank you for making it possible to live with you forever by what you did on the cross, how you died for us so that we'd be forgiven. Thank you that we'll get to hug our loved ones again in heaven and praise you together. We love you so much. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Wow, what a story. Poor Isaac. He was so, he misses his brother. But as he saw, he had hope and encouragement because he'll get to see him again in heaven. And we learn that Jesus' power lets us live forever. Such a powerful message. Now, we're going to go to my favorite station. It's time to go see Shannon at Imagination Station. Let's see what she's got today. Welcome back to Imagination Station. I'm so happy to see you. I can only imagine what we'll discover together today. Today, we're discovering that Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus! But before we do anything else, you know, I just have to ask, did you bring your imaginations today? I don't know. Your brains look a little dried out to me, but I have an idea. I was talking with my friend Finn. Finn, he's a rainbow trout. Finn told me some really interesting facts about rainbow trout. Did you know rainbow trout are part of the salmon family? So each year, they go home to the same river where they were born to have their babies. That's so incredible. How do they know where to go? God made rainbow trout so amazing. Anyway, I was thinking, since rainbow trout go back to where they were born, 
Let's pretend we're rainbow trout like Finn. Make your best fish face. When I count to three, keep your fish face and shout out where you were born. Ready? One, two, three. Aurora Colorado. That was fun, all you fish. Now our imaginations are really swimming. Okay, here's today's question. Rainbow trout have teeth, but do they have only upper teeth or only lower teeth? Got your answer ready? Okay, time for the drum roll so I can reveal the amazing answer. And the answer is, rainbow trout like Finn have teeth only on the roof of their mouths. Imagine that. Today, we're discovering that Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. Heaven will be amazing. But here on earth, sometimes things get a little rough. Sometimes our lives are filled with hard things we have to face. Think about some of the hard things you've gone through in life or hard things that kids your age sometimes face. For me, I went through a really hard time when I had to move away from all of my friends. I wasn't sure if I'd ever make any new friends. Yes, Sometimes our lives are filled with things that are hard. Kind of like this bottle is filled with water. One day our lives on earth will end and that seems sad, but it will also be the end of all those hard things in life you thought about. Sadness will end. Sickness will end. Bullying will end. Loneliness will end. Because of Jesus, there will be no more tears, no more sorrow. There will be only joy and light and love and Jesus. Our joy will be bottomless, endless. Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. I'm so excited and thankful to know that when we believe in Jesus, we can know for sure that we'll live forever with him in heaven. Our story will go on and on because of Jesus' great love and power. Today's gizmo is called a perpetual paper. The word perpetual means never ending, something that goes on and on without end. And these perpetual papers can remind us of our never ending story with Jesus. Each page of your perpetual paper has something for you to do. And as you open each surprising page, you'll see that your story with Jesus just keeps going on and on and on. It's really cool. Go ahead and grab your perpetual paper. Hold it so that you're looking at Ramsey, the bighorn sheep. This page reminds us of what we learned on our first day at Rocky Railway VBS. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. And there's a space for you to draw something hard that Jesus has helped you do. Maybe you'll draw a soccer ball because Jesus helped you learn a hard new sport. Or maybe you'll draw a school building because Jesus helped you during a hard time at school. So go ahead and start drawing.
love how Jesus helps us do hard things. His power is amazing and full of love. Now hold your perpetual paper so you're looking at the bighorn sheep and open it like a book. Cool! Now I see Ava the red-tailed hawk. She can remind us that Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus! There's a space where you can write a note to Jesus, thanking him for the hope he's given you. Now unfold your perpetual paper to discover another buddy. The Sierra page reminds us that Jesus' power helps us be bold. Trust Jesus! Sierra says to tell about a time Jesus helped you be bold. For me, it was the first time I trained for a marathon. I didn't think there was any way I could make it, but I prayed and Jesus helped me to get through. Today, we're discovering that Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus! What an incredible gift! The chance to live with Jesus in heaven forever. When you believe in Jesus, your relationship with him will never end. It will be perpetual. Open your perpetual paper one more time to find Finn. Heaven is going to be so amazing. Listen to just a few things the Bible says about what heaven will be like. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And listen to what this description of heaven will look like. The wall was made of jasper, and the city was pure gold and clear as glass. The twelve gates were made of pearls, each gate from a single pearl, and the main street was pure gold as clear as glass. Doesn't that sound amazing? On Finn's page, draw what you think heaven will be like. Go ahead and do that now. I love these perpetual papers. I can't stop playing with mine. It's so fun to keep opening the pages over and over again. And no matter which page I open, I can remember Jesus' power. And I can use my perpetual paper to tell my friends and family that Jesus' love is perpetual and it never ends. Well, we've come to the end of our time today at Imagination Station. Take your perpetual paper and put it inside a baggie so it doesn't get lost. If you have a Try This at Home sticker, it will help you remember today's point. Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus! 
All right, we'll see you here next time at Imagination Station. <laughs>
right, good job learning that new song. Now we'll do the one that I, we taught you yesterday. Let's do number three, Kevin. so thankful for that, that Jesus died and rose again to pay the price of our sins. Okay, we need a, we need a fun song, Kev. Do you have a fun song? He's back there not, somewhat nodding his head. Let's do number four, Kev.
And that today we learn that God loves us so much that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We all make bad decisions. We all sin. But God loves us. He is with us. He is always there for us. And what's amazing is that he forgives us. And if we believe in Jesus, we will live with him forever. That's the amazing message of today. That's the amazing message of this week. That Jesus' power can do amazing things. And tomorrow we are going to learn about how we can take that message and share it with others. Okay, one last song. We'll sing our This Train is Bound for Glory. And it all talks about how Jesus is preparing a place for us in heaven. Here we go, Kev. Number five. in heaven for me this train is bound for glory this train this train is bound for glory this train this train is bound for glory this train this train is bound for glory Jesus has made a place in heaven for me Bring it down. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. Jesus made a place in heaven for me. This train is bound for glory. This train. in heaven for me. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train. This train. This train. And that's what it's all about, that this train is bound for glory. I just love the Keep moving and moving and grooving. Okay, it, our time has come to an end for today, but we have one more day tomorrow. And if I heard right, somebody is going to throw a party tomorrow. So stay tuned for that, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. Let's close with prayer. Dear God, we know you love us so. You sent your son into this world to live a life that was perfect but we still rejected him. We sent him to the cross. And we know all the sins that we had, he carried to that cross. He died on that cross for you and for me. But thankfully, three days later, he rose from the dead to conquer death and to say, your sins are forgiven. And if we believe in you and your son, we know we will have life forever. And we know that Jesus' power lets us live forever. We thank you for that. And we thank you for sending your son. And we just know that powerful message. And we want to share that with others. We ask you to be with us this day. To guide us, protect us, and keep us safe. And bring us safely back for day number five. And all God's people said, Amen. <laughs>